Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Welcome back to my channel. It is me, Ebony Shanae Evans, and I am so blessed to have you back here with me. Today we have a very good video, quick and straight to the point. Um, before we start, let's just jump straight into prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we worship you. We give you honor, we give you glory. Lord, we just ask that you come in our hearts right now. Lord, we bind every distraction in the name of Jesus. Lord, let us not be distracted. Let, let us be focused only on you, only on the word that you're about to deliver, to deliver in our spirits. Father God, we just ask that you just have your way. Lord, bless us to be a sacrifice of use, a, a, a vessel right now, a tool ready to be utilized, ready to listen, ready to adhere, ready to just be at your feet. In the name of Jesus, we pray and we say, Amen. So, I have a question. Are you misplacing or are you desiring God's promise over God? Okay, let me ask that again. Are you desiring God's promise over him? Now, I saw a post recently on, his, on, on social media and it inspired me because this has been something that's kind of been lingering in my spirit already. And God wanted me to tell his people, to tell his children that he is greater than the promise. He is greater than the promise itself because he is God. He is the supplier. He is the source. OK, um, and the scripture that we're going to use to that I'm going to use to teach on is this. So we're going to read first from King James and then we're going to read from the Passion Translation. And it says, in the last day, this is John 7, 37. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried saying, if any man thirsts, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. So that was King James. Let's read the Passion Translation. Then on the most important day of the feast, the last day, Jesus stood and shouted out to the crowds, All you thirsty ones, come to me. Come to me and drink. Believe in me so that rivers of living water will burst out from within you, flowing from your innermost being, just like the scripture says. Jesus was prophesying about the Holy Spirit that believers were being prepared to receive. But notice what Jesus said. He said, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. So, yes, God promises beautiful things. He promised us restoration. He promised us um, new beginnings. He promised us, you know, to be married. And he promised us our children to be safe and okay. He protects us. He is our shield. He, he, he has a plethora, a, a list, a, a limitless list of promises. But don't fantasize and be infatuated so much with the promise that you are misplacing that promise for God. God should always be number one in your heart. And I'm going to explain why. Because a promise can come and, and come to pass and it has happened. Things we go through, it's like a wave. Life is up and down. Life is, is just always moving in directions that we are not always aware of. We can't always call it. But Jesus remains faithful. And so no matter what season you are in, are you trusting God enough to know that he is the promise of all promises? He is the gift that just keeps on giving. So we have to be careful as children of God not to place what God has promised us over God in our hearts. Yes, God has promised us beautiful things. God has personally promised me amazing things that I know that's getting ready to come to pass. But I understand that 
even with that promise, I'm excited and happy about it. But my true joy comes from knowing God for myself. My true joy comes from sitting in his presence. My true joy comes from worshiping and, and, and worshiping him and exalting his holy name. My true joy knowing that had it not been for Jesus Christ on my side, where would I be? My true joy comes from knowing that Jesus loved me in my mess. My true joy is knowing that Jesus Christ saved me and called me and chose me when man casted me out. So don't let the promises of God take the place of God himself in your heart. Your true joy has to come from God himself. Yes, the promises, you are supposed to be excited about it. You are supposed to be grateful for them. But don't turn that into idolatry. Don't idolize those promises so much that you are not spending time with God. That, that, that you are not being intimate with God. That you're not walking and talking with God. And you're not reading his word. God says he wants to be number one in your heart. Not that promise. Not that marriage. Not 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 that next level. He is the promise. That's why he says, he that believeth on me out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Because your heart is, is, is now in a covenant with Jesus Christ. So now you are connected through the spirit. Now his spirit is living on the inside of you. So now you have a well of spring and life that is everlasting in your body, in your spirit. That's why we as saints of God, as children of God, we have to be careful to not idolize what God has promised us, not idolize these blessings. Not Look, don't let Instagram have you out here being foolish. Don't let Instagram have you out here comparing your life to other people that's only showing a glimpse of their lives. Don't let Instagram have you out here being fooled. Don't let the enemy play tricks on your mind. Jesus Christ is the portion that lasts forever. Jesus Christ is the portion that is everlasting. Jesus Christ is the portion that is beyond anything you can imagine or think. So the portion and the promise is always Jesus. Now check this out. In the Passion Translation it says, Jesus was prophesying about the Holy Spirit that believers were being prepared to receive. When you have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you, the promises of God have already been fulfilled in your life. Your obedience unto Christ is, is what's going to bless your life. Yes, God's promises are beautiful, but don't let that be um, um, filled. Don't, don't let that be your only portion. That, that you, it's like coming to God, like almost using him. Well, God, you promised me this. Well, God, you promised me that. Well, God, you said this was going to happen. Well, God, you, yes, he did. But you can't even enjoy the season you in right now because you so infatuated with what's about to happen next. And God is like, hold up. Uh, before that promise come, I'm still teaching you some stuff. I'm still trying to help you grow. I'm still trying to help you forgive. I'm still trying to refine you with Holy Ghost fire. I'm still trying to refine your heart to be pure so I can be pleased with you. Don't be so infatuated on the promise that you are missing out on right now. His promises have already manifested right now in your life and you can't even see it because you're thinking about next year. Well, yes, God wants you to look forward to next year and he wants you to be blessed and he wants you to just have peace in your heart. But he wants to be your portion. He wants you to be so in love with him. He wants to spend time with you. Where it's just you and God. Let me tell you something. I give, I go give me a towel. I lay it on the floor in the living room. I turn on their worship. And his promises don't even compare. Who, Jesus? His promises don't even compare to his love in that moment. In that moment where it's just me and God. I, I literally drown in his love. I, I, I literally am I'm, I'm, I'm overtaken by his love. It is completely overwhelming. So even though I know God has given me promises 
to just be in his presence is more than enough for me. And that's what God wants from all of his children. He don't want you to be so caught up in the promise that you're missing out on spending time with him. You're missing out on intimate time between you and Jesus. God says, just, just meet me there. God says, just meet me here. Just spend time with me. Let, me. let me just show you how good I've been. Let me just pour out my love over you. Let me just pour out my fragrance of, of, of my glory over you. Let me just pour out how faithful I've been to you. Let me just pour out how much I love you in spite of your rebellion, in spite of your disobedience. Let me just show you how much I care for you. Let me just show you how much I adore you. Let me just show you how great of a father I am. I am so don't let his promises overtake him in your heart he shall always be number one make him number one make him your number one priority he is the portion forever it's gonna be a billion promises that come to pass in your life but the source is Jesus Christ don't you ever forget that when, we, when you have the Holy Spirit, you have everything that you can ever imagine. He is the portion, not that promise. Okay? I love you guys. This was a quick, short video. I appreciate y'all. I adore y'all. Um, prayer call is every Monday um, at 7 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time. Join us. Uh, prayer call will we'll continue to go on as God leads us and I'm so excited about what the Father is doing but I'm more excited because I know him for myself remember it was a video a couple of weeks ago where it was a scripture where it says nobody was ever able to do there was never a prophet like uh, Moses in all of Israel ever again who God knew face to face that's a question that I want you to ask yourself at the end of this video. Does God know me face to face? Have I appeared to God in such a way that it is evident that I love him more than I love my car, more than I love my marriage, more than I, I love my soon to be promises? Okay? I love you guys and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.